8.55 Eastern Time. And Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. Well, now we know where the Russians stand for the moment. Russia is the friend of peace-loving Germany and dislikes those imperialistic aggressors, England and France, and doesn't think much of the United States either. But Russia will give Germany only political support and will remain neutral. That is the substance of the speech made today in Moscow by Premier and Foreign Commissar Molotov. He said that Turkey would regret signing a treaty with England and France instead of Russia, which he said means discarding a policy of neutrality. He said, too, that if the Finns didn't come to an agreement with Russia, that would work out to the serious detriment of Finland. But he also outlined the terms Russia has proposed to Finland, which are not so extensive as has sometimes been reported. Though from the reaction in Helsinki tonight, they may be more than the Finns will accept. And he says that Russia has made no demands on Norway and Sweden. Further points that he brought out, Russia wants the war to end, and Germany, too, is striving for peace. England and France are the aggressors because they want to continue the war, not for the sake of Poland or democracy, but for their colonial interests. It is not only senseless but criminal to wage a war for the destruction of Hitlerism, camouflaged as a fight for democracy. Ideologies cannot be destroyed by force, said Mr. Molotov, which is a curious comment on the Russian repression of opinion that disagrees with the government. He added that a strong Germany is an indispensable condition for the durable peace of Europe. Molotov made two references to American policy. He said that the proposal to repeal the arms embargo raised justified misgivings. It would only prolong and complicate the war for the benefit of American munitions makers. Nothing was said, of course, about Russia's supplies to Germany, except that Russia will do everything possible to hasten the end of the war. It looks as if Molotov is thinking of no possible end but one favorable to Germany. And in discussing the Finnish question, he said that President Roosevelt found it proper to intervene. You remember the president wrote that he hoped the good relations between Russia and Finland would continue. And Mr. Molotov said that one finds this hard to reconcile with American neutrality. He went on to say that Russia had recognized Finland's independence years ago, but that the Philippines and Cuba have long been demanding their freedom and independence from the United States, but can't get it. This interpretation of history seems almost as curious as his definition of neutrality. As for Finland, Molotov said that Russia wants to move the Finnish frontier back out of gunshot of Leningrad, several dozen kilometers farther, but is willing to compensate Finland with territory farther north. The Finns are also asked to disarm their fortified frontier zones and to lease Russia some territory near the mouth of the Gulf of Finland for a naval base. And there is mention of additional mutual guarantees, whatever that means. On the other hand, Molotov declared that Russia does not object to Finland's fortifying the Åland Islands, and that while Russia had at first asked for such a mutual assistance treaty as was signed with Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania, that demand has now been dropped because the Finns didn't want it. However, the Finns were furious tonight when they found out that the terms had been published, as they had apparently hoped to reduce them by further negotiation. Especially disturbing was the demand for the disarming of the fortified frontier. The Finnish mission, already on its way to Moscow, was ordered to stop at Viborg before reaching the border while the government considered the matter. Molotov's language sounds as if the Finns must sign on the dotted line or else. But what used to be fighting words in diplomacy are commonplaces now, so perhaps the dispute will still be settled without fighting. Mussolini's shake-up of his cabinet ministers this morning, his replacement of the heads of the Army and the Air Force, as well as the Secretary General of the Fascist Party is generally taken to mean that he's getting rid of men who are too closely tied up with the pro-German policy of the Berlin-Rome axis. Not that the new men are pro-ally. High Italian quarters describe them, according to an international news dispatch from Rome, as strictly middle-of-the-road neutrals. German newspapers, as Mr. Shira reported earlier this evening, say that Mussolini's policies are not affected. But those policies have lately aimed at strict neutrality. And in the House of Representatives, the administration won the first test on the neutrality bill by a surprisingly large margin when it was voted by a majority of 60 to send the bill to conference committee. The real test, of course, will come on the motion to instruct the House conferees to keep the embargo. But it looks as if that will pass, too, though by a much smaller majority. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.